I kind of always uh, wondered what I was missing, I guess. You know, I'd ask people, you know, what is, what is 3D vision like? And that's a really hard question to answer for people who have always had it. I saw this TED Talk uh, by someone named Susan Berry. Um, and she was one of the first people who was saying that you could actually gain stereo vision in adulthood. Um, at first, about two or three weeks in, um, I just saw the keys on my keyboard kind of popping up. When I got it and it worked so quickly, um, without too much effort, that was when I was, I thought, you know, I have to really try to see how far I can push this, try to, try to figure out what's possible with the technology. Sometimes something associated with strabismus is something called lazy eye, or the medical word is amblyopia. So a child develops a lazy eye, and to treat that lazy eye, we patch a child. And the patching is to help take the weak eye and make it stronger and give it best vision during the early years of, ch of child development. I was diagnosed with a lazy eye um, when I was less than a year old, and I've been wearing glasses my whole life. Um, I did hundreds of hours of patching when I was a kid. And, and it did end up working. When I was about nine, nine or 10 years old, um, my doctor said, you know, I was past the critical age, I was too old, and I would never be able to learn how to use my weak eye together with my strong one. Basically, the brain will often take the shortest route to the best vision. So if something's not mesh, matching up, if it's blurrier in one eye, or if the eye is off center, um, the brain will just only use the good eye. And so what we do is, Inside virtual reality, we'll take single objects and we'll increase the signal by increasing the brightness of those objects um, in the weak eye. And we'll decrease the signal by decreasing the brightness in the strong eye. And that kind of tricks the brain into using um, the eye when normally it never would in normal seeing conditions. So our job as physicians who deal with ophthalmology for business problems our goal is perfect depth perception. That's what's holy to us. That's what we look to do. So occasionally I'll prescribe, if you will, video games four times a day, call the doctor in two weeks. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not by much. Um, but any kind of close near work that converges the eyes is strength training for the eyes. The advantage of fine depth perception is that you drive better, you play sports better. All those fine functions you do better. You thread a needle better, all those fine functions. The reason why virtual reality is necessary for this is that we have to show the same object with different properties to each eye. And before virtual reality, that wasn't really possible. And for a person with lazy eye, we, we show this cube uh, to both eyes. And we'll make it brighter in the weak eye and dimmer in the strong eye. And what that does is it breaks through the suppression of the weak eye that people with lazy eye have. So one of the issues with any new application or treatment is, is it truly been scientifically tested? As multi-centered double-blind studies where you test patients with it and without it and see the difference. And also the thing to be careful about is some devices require FDA approval. And presuming this one doesn't may be too much of a presumption, maybe not. So I've talked to a ton of optometrists, um, vision therapists, ophthalmologists. We have two optometrists on our board of advisors um, who are actively um, you know, making sure we're doing this the right way, um, advising us on how to build the game. Our long-term plan is to get this software out to as many people as possible who need it. Um, we want to help as many people as, as we can and so that probably means um, at home, um, you, can, you can buy it over the internet, download it, use it at home on any head-mounted display. The value we can offer to people, I think, is worth the expense of a head-mounted display.